Notice how this good swimmer weight shifts from hip to hip and moves the arms and the hips at the same speed. This is core-based swimming. This is the most powerful way to swim. The hands are not moving faster than the weight shifts from one side to the other. Weight shift, weight shift, weight shift from side to side, shoulder width apart. By comparison, watch this poor swimmer, how the head's mostly out of the water and the hips are not rotating to match the arm stroke. So the arms are essentially dragging the body through the water. See how much more bubbles and splash you notice. Head high means the arms have to push down fast and they get ahead of the hips. The hips and the arms are not moving at the same speed. This is a much more draining stroke. In this drill, balancing on the stomach, notice how the head, the back, and the hips are all at the same level with the nose looking down. Every time the head comes up, the hips go down. There's a sinking feeling. Then when there's pressure on the chest and head, the hips return back to the surface. Same thing happens when you're swimming. When the head comes up, the hips go down, the body stalls. So by learning how to control this in drills, you can learn how to adjust it in your own swimming to keep your head in the water more. Head up, hips go down. Head down, the hips rise back to the surface. There should be a small sliver of the back of the head, the shoulders, and the butt cheeks all touching the surface. That's a nice straight, balanced body line. Now let's take that to swimming. Trying to apply that same principle of pressing on the head and the chest helps keep the hips close to the surface when you're swimming. This is a great way to incorporate drills. Do the drill as a few 25s of practice and then apply it to your swimming. This is balance on the back. Lengthening the spine line, the chin's tucked a little bit to make the back nice and straight. Now look what happens when you get to a bad position. Lifting the head a little bit or releasing pressure on the buoy causes the hips to sink substantially. Even though the kick stays the same, notice where the hips go as the head lifts up. They drop towards the bottom like a rock. So pressure always needs to be on the buoy and the back of the head without arching your back. This is a very good recovery position if you're in open water and need some extra air or to clear or fix your goggles. This is called side balance, rolling to the side to make the arm dry. This is a harder place to balance because you have less support from the water when you're on your side. Nose up for air, barely any of your head out of the water, and then nose down to see if you're going straight trying to keep the spine as straight as possible. Biggest tendency of error here is to arch your back and tilt the head to try to get the air. When you're doing this right, the arm is pretty dry on top. Nose down directly on the side, nose up a little bit towards your back. This next drill is with an arm extending the body line. An arm out in front of your buoy helps lengthen your boat and make you travel with less energy output. Nose up for air, nose down to see if you're going straight. This position I call freeze frame freestyle because it's kind of that position you want to get to in every stroke in your swimming, even though it's just for a moment. It's not a position we hold when we swim, we just go to it for one brief moment. Balancing on our side is much more difficult than on our stomach, so this is why we practice it, by just doing it as a drill. Nose up for air, nose down to see if you're going straight. Notice how the eyes are never looking forward. The head stays on the spine line. Slow motion swimming. Swimming at very easy speeds, maintaining body balance, is a great way to burn into muscle memory how to do things correctly. If you're not balanced, you'll feel rushed to take the next stroke. If you have good posture and balance, you'll be able to swim as fast 
or as easily as you like. Good swimmers don't make much splash. They don't make much noise. They look quiet and comfortable in the water, even though they're not traveling at very slow speeds. Learn to do these drills on each side, since being fluid in the water requires you to swim more on your side than on your stomach. The goal is to learn to breathe by rolling your body to air instead of lifting your head to air. Once you can kick comfortably on each side, try swimming very slowly and easily, focusing on skating down the pool on each hip rather than plowing through the water with low hips.